Well, how do there, chums? Salute Mondo. Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, it's a cup of tea with Captain Steve. Yes, I've got a big frickin' mug of tea. Got a fair bit to talk about today. Um, there hasn't really been no, any No Man's Sky news, but not from the old Shaun of the Murrays, precisely. But I, I, let's jump over into the old world and... Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So let's just bring up the old Tinterwebs. Now you can see here I'm on Professor Cynical's YouTube channel. Now why am I on Professor Cynical's YouTube channel? Well, if I scroll on down a little bit here, he's made a lovely video. You know, everything you need to know about No Man's Sky at year end, which is pretty darn freaking nice. Goes to town, gives a lot of praise, a lot of feedback, and things like that. But then there is this this one here, this video here that's stirring up a little bit of controversy. Now you can see here, I have watched quite a lot of Professor Cynical's content, and I do find that Professor Cynical stirs debate, whether that's positive or negative, but it gets people talking, which is good, especially when there's a bit of a lull inside of the No Man's Sky community. At least it keeps tongues wagging. So anyway, let's jump on over to this video here. Let's just hit this one up for a no, second. No, a good few... Now I'm just going to mute it, I've just got it on in the background, because what I'm really interested in is what the community thinks. Because Professor Cynical talks for the community inside of this video, and he says, well this is how I feel, this is how a majority of my viewers feel. Now he does use Discord, he is in touch with his community, and maybe his community does feel this way. But scrolling down and reading the comments, there's quite a fair bit of sort of, hmm, I see your point, but I think you've crossed a line. Or at least that's how I'm reading a massive swathe of all the comments that I'm reading here. Now, quite a lot of like got likes to them. So maybe other people haven't sort of sounded off, but at the same time, they've put likes on here to say that they actually agree with what's going on here, comment-wise, you know? And I like that Professor Cynical is always amicable with his review, with his sort of replies. I appreciate your view. I do, of course, disagree to a point and all that sort of stuff. He's never rude to people. You know, he lets people sound off. So, you know, maybe we should give him the same courtesy and at least let him make a video without sort of having to. But I think people like this inside of his comments that they can have their say. They can say their thing and they're not going to get their comment deleted or anything like that. And, you know, Professor Cynical is often respectful with his actual comments and his feedback. I like Professor Cynical in the way that he is with that. He's very open to that sort of thing. I don't think he deserves to be dumped on in any way, shape or form. And you know, that it is getting the debate going, which again, I appreciate in times of lull. And you know, I'm making a video right now, based on his video. It's got me talking. It works. Yes, it might have pressed a few freaking buttons, a few, a few buttons I didn't want pressed earlier this morning while I'm having my tea. But at the same time, I do speak to Professor Cynical in um, direct messages and things. And I said to him, to a fashion, Mr. Cynical, I agree. So anyway, I thought I'd make this video to show where I agree and where I disagree. So anyhow, I jumped over onto the Twitter space this morning and I saw this. You know, other content creators jumping in to say, hold on, this is a little bit mental. Yup, I've entered into let's just get mad stage of waiting for the next update for No Man's Sky. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> I love that statement. That needs to go on a freaking t-shirt, L, L Legacy Zero. I guess. Now, he doesn't actually point out this Professor Cynical, but uh, people inside of his comments do. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it gets a little bit sort of, you know, whatever. But anyways, yeah, people are going to have debate. And now it's stirred up debate even over on the Twitter space, people inside the view of us. So, you know, anyway. Let's get to my thoughts on all of this, people. So I actually retweeted Sean Murray's tweet, and I put my little post above it, which I'll get to in a moment. It has the quality of four or five full games put together with Hello Kate games going above and beyond constantly for the game and the community. Calling it a labor of love would be an understatement. Right, well, this came from T Touch Arcade. And it's just a snippet of what was said there. In fact, there's only a little bit more. I say a snippet, that's pretty much the whole freaking paragraph. But anyway, let's just break this down. It has the quality of four or five full games put together. Okay, um, 
Mobile phone games, maybe. Um, AAA titles, probably not. You know, I think that is a bit of an over-exaggeration. But if you was to compare it to VR games, heck yes. Yeah, four or five freaking VR games, 100% agree. Because when you play No Man's Sky in VR, they really have gone to town. It's the full game. It's the full game in VR. The game, the experience you have in flat mode, you have in full VR splendor. And it's freaking amazing, okay? Uh, I don't want to downplay just how great this game is in VR. On the PlayStation VR store, I would say No Man's Sky is a definite must. It's a definite must, people. You've got to get this game in VR. If you've got PlayStation VR 2 or PlayStation VR even, you've got to pick this up because the game is freaking epic. And yes, I would agree because a lot of other PlayStation VR titles feel like tech demos. There's only a few that feel like they're touching just on being a full game. No Man's Sky blows them all out of the freaking water with what they've done VR wise. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of agree with that first line, that statement in, in a roundabout way. The only reason I don't say it's got the quality of four or five full games is because this still feels very sandbox-esque, especially with the ability to swap game modes on the fly and the end game loop. It doesn't feel like it's gamified. It feels more like an experience than a game. To call No Man's Sky a game even, when I see it as being an experience. I mean, this is my opinion. I mean, you, you've probably got your own opinion on this and you probably think my opinion's wrong, but I kind of see this as an experience rather than a game. So to say that it's better or got more quality than four or five full games, I would have to disagree when it comes to other games that are out there. There are other games that feel like more of a game. You know, they've got a beginning, they've got a middle, they've got an end, they've got a boss, they've got a gameplay loop, they've got new game plus, you know, that sort of thing. I would say Starfield feels like a more shaped game. No Man's Sky still feels like a pot of infinite potential, but it's still in sandbox mode. It still hasn't really worked out what it is. It's still being put together. It still doesn't feel like it's a complete game. So when it says full of five games put together, I still see heaps of untapped potential inside of No Man's Sky. And I still don't feel Hello Games has delivered the game that they promised right back when they started putting out trailers. And I'll get to that in a moment. You can see I've got another tab up here. I'll be hitting that up in a moment and expanding on that. Anyway, Hello Games going above and beyond constantly for the game. 100% agree on that part. 100% agree on that part. The game itself is improving every single update and it's improving on that narrative and it's it's slowly getting to what i feel is now end gamey sort of content for a new player jumping into no man's sky it's got breadth it's got depth it's got everything you're, you're, like, you're like overwhelmed you're like what do i do first do i get myself an epic freighter do i do do i build an awesome base it's got endless sort of stuff for a new player jumping into the point they go oh my god this game's huge but then once you get past all of that and you've hit the middle, the middle is still fairly interesting. You're doing you're doing some of the stories like, you know, the Artemis quest line or you're interacting with space pirates or you're building your own sentinel drone called Laylaps. It's freaking mental. Or you come across a living ship and living leviathans. You're like, oh my God, I thought the beginning was overwhelming. The middle is freaking insane. And then after you've done the middle, you get to the end part. You get you get through all those stories, you've done all those, you've got all those bits. You're now got S-Class everything. And you're like, freaking OP, bring on the end content. And then that's where it just drops. Boom. Zip. There isn't anything there, apart from now these echo phages which appear at campsites and you've got to learn all their words, which is like watching paint dry. And you build yourself a staff. Well, that, it's modular, it's quite cool. But the modular bits go better with their actual suit. So everybody walks around with, with an actual set staff. You, it, it, they, it doesn't feel like... I mean, if you get like the broken bits like of a robot's foot and then you stick a, a massive trident on the top that looks all futuristic, it just looks cack. Whereas if you've got like the robot head and you've got the robot feet and, and you've got the junk piece in the middle, it looks like it's in keeping. Everybody has the same sort of looking staffs because they build them with the bits that look right together or else you just got a Frankenstein stick. You know what I mean? So, the end game loop 
and the end game content for No Man's Sky, I think is what's stopping No Man's Sky from being a full game. It's still sandboxy because it hasn't really got the end game and the end game loop, new game plus. None of that seems to be tangible or sorted out yet. And it kind of feels that the updates that we've been having throughout 2023 was getting us there. And I'm wondering whether it's going to finalize that in 2024. But we'll see, we'll see what 2024 brings. But I honestly don't think Hello Games or No Man's Sky is done yet. So to say that it's the quality of four or five games, four games at that, is a bit of a weird statement. And I can kind of see where that conflict has probably stirred the hornet's nest slightly with inside of cynical stomach. How he conveyed that, though, I think he probably could have done it with a little bit more finesse that wouldn't upset a lot of the community. But anyway, let's, uh, let's um, move on to community. Because then they say, for the game and the community. Now, the community... <sighs> Again, this person is talking for the whole community. I think there's always a danger of when you wide brush something and you start talking for other people. Now, I only can talk for myself and I can only talk for those that I know are my members and backers that kind of have the same sort of wavelength as me and are on the same sort of opinion set as me to a degree. So I'm only talking for a small, tiny little fraction of, say, the community. Now. I would kind of say it's dangerous whenever you do that, when you do that wide brushing stuff, like I just said. So I think that there's going to be people that are new to No Man's Sky, picking it up on Steam Deck, picking it up on Switch, picking up on Apple Mac, that have only picked it up in like the last year or so, that are going to be like, oh my God, this game is a freaking dream. This is amazing. This is the best thing since sliced freaking bread when it comes to space adventure games. And they'd be right. It freaking is. It's, it's awesome. Okay. But then there's also the community that signed up for this and bought it on pre-order based on trailers and based on press kits and based on pretty much everything Sean said from his mouth that came across as being something rather different to what we're playing now. The game that we're playing now is freaking fantastic, but the game that we could be playing is equally as fantastic, okay? But for different reasons. And we need some of that reason to come into the actual iteration that we've been waiting for. Every update, we're like, is this the update that brings us what was promised? And it's not, it's something separate, it's something different. Like they brought in the autophages and whatever. But none of that was inside of the original trailers. But what was inside the original trailers still hasn't been actualized inside of actual game. But we'll get to that in a moment on this last tab. Anyway, calling it a labor of love would be an understatement. That I, I agree with. Every single project that Hello Games picks up, every game that Hello Games has put out there has been a labour of love. Be that Joe Danger, be it The Last Campfire, or be it No Man's Sky, and I honestly can't wait to their next venture. I really like Hello Games as a studio. Now, there's no, I know there's people out there that would disagree with that, to say that they, they put out too much radio silence. They don't interact with the community as much as they should. And that's echoed inside of um, Professor Cynical's video. He says something fairly similar. Now, they do have a community manager. His name is Tim, Tim Woolley. And I have messaged him countless times. You know, I, I, I go my messages. I could show you the amount of times I've messaged Tim Woolley. It, I, I messaged him quite a lot. And I can see that the little tick goes blue. I know that he's read it. I know that he's seen it. And that's good enough for me and, and, and most of the time. 90% of the time, that's fine. I'm like, great, they've seen it. They know. And I know that they're always listening. I know that that message will probably reach Sean in some sort of way, whether that's in a video call or around a conference table. Oh, Captain Steven said this this week. You know, that sort of thing. I don't message him like every week or something. I don't hound the guy. It's maybe like every two months, I might send him a message saying, I really enjoyed this update. Or can you pass this on to your team? How about this for an idea? I've made this video idea. Take a look. That sort of stuff. Or if we're doing the No Man's Sky meetup, I'll hit him up and say, we're doing it again at the Free Pigeons pub on this date at this time. It'd be great if some of your team wants to come and join us. Now, I understand that they probably never will, but it'd be freaking awesome to get them to sign some autographs, things like that. And they always give us some sort of merch to give away for the raffles, or they gave us a giant cake this year as well and put monies behind the bar and gave us some merch to give away. Freaking fantastic. They've been they've been so positive and they've been so awesome as backers to the community when it comes to our No Man's Sky meetup that we do annually inside of Guildford. It's a fantastic affair and partly and, and the majority of the reason why is because it's so near to Hello Games' studio. And not only that, Hello Games actually 
puts in towards it. They fully, they fully endorse it. So you know what? I really do like how they interact with the community when it comes to real life stuff. But you know, the people that attend that meet, the uh, meetup is only a small swathe of the community. The maximum headcount we've had is like 50 people from the community there on the one day. So that's a very small fraction of the community. I mean, we make some videos, we put it all out there. We show that Hello Games' love spreads across the whole community, or at least we like to put it out that way. So I honestly think that they do enough when it comes to the community. But I think in times where there's a bit of fallout, is say like when the update comes out on the PlayStation, it comes out on PC, but then it doesn't hit Xbox or it doesn't hit Nintendo Switch. And it doesn't hit them for a good couple of weeks. And you can see content coming out from the, the play, PC players and the PSN, the, the PlayStation players, and the Xbox players and the Switch players are sounding off in the comments on, the, on those content creators videos saying, I haven't got it yet, I haven't got it yet, oh this is spoilery. And it causes that sort of rift inside of the community where you, you then get in this divide. And even me, I feel conflicted. If I've got the update early, do I put the update out there? Do I cover it or do I not? Do I hold back because it's, it's gonna be spoilers for a certain swathe of the community? Where Hello Games could do something and say, look, we're really sorry, but it, it, due to certificate issues or due to X, Y, and Z outside of our control, it's only on PC and PlayStation for now. It's gonna be hitting Switch and it's gonna be hitting Xbox hopefully next week or something. They could be a little bit more vocal in those times because when there's no sort of communication as to why it's happened, people start speculating and guessing at why it may have happened, you know? So there are times I honestly think that they could do better by the community just in keeping them informed in times where they can see that conflict is happening because they're always listening. And some of those conflicts, I even hit up Tim Woody. I've even got on the freaking phone to them before and said, hey, or tried, it went to voicemail. But yeah, I made a video on that. It was quite hilarious. Anyways, people, I kind of feel fairly conflicted by this statement that's been put out there because there are two sides to it. And I think, you know, that's all Professor Cynical was trying to say. There's two sides to this statement. There's one that he agrees with that he's completely fine with, but then there's the other side of this that sort of rubs him up the wrong way. And he is a legacy player like me. Now, if you jump on over to the No Man's Sky website, this is actually done by Hello Games. And the Sean and the Murray has probably had hand in it. You can see here, it says press kit. Okay, so this is still what people in the press, people that probably haven't even picked up No Man's Sky, have to go by okay so they roll down here it says fact sheet so yeah there's got to be factual it's got to be freaking factual it's the freaking truth on this page mate so you scroll down and you get to the features a truly open universe if you can see it you can go there you can fly seamlessly from the surface of a planet to another and to every star in the sky is a sun that you can visit okay all right here's a challenge for you people out there out of you of us go fly towards the sun go on See what happens when you fly to the sun. You can't visit a sun. You can't. Your, si your ship slowly dissolves and the game breaks and it crashes and you disappear pretty much. And you float around in space and die. Okay. Uh, I think pretty much every major update, I think Professor Cynical has tried flying to the sun. I haven't because it takes freaking hours. And I know what's going to happen because the sun is just a pixel. It's, it's a JPEG. It doesn't exist, it's not a wireframe. Perhaps it did right back when Sean of the Murrays and Hello Games first put No Man's Sky together when there was still planetary rotation and all that sort of magic in the game. That's not there anymore. You can't visit a sun. And it wouldn't take much for them to tweak that frickin' sentence. But it's still there, okay? Exploration is seeing things that no one else has ever seen before. Every creature, geological formation, plant and spaceship is unique. Well, you see the alpha vector inside of the actual main trailer, the gameplay trailer from the E3, and everybody wanted that ship. But knowing it's unique, and the chances of finding it is going to be second to none, we're never going to find that ship. No, nope. actually, go onto the coordinate exchange, type in alpha vector, and you're going to find maybe, maybe 50 different, 60 different finds of exactly that same configuration of ship, maybe four or five just in the Euclid system, and then four or five in, say, Eisentam. Uh, you can find... 
that ship all over the place. And yes, it might have certain unique traits to it. Might maybe is a different decal in a different place or it, or whatever. But no, that they're not ev not every single one. Not every single one is unique. There are re repeats, and you're going to find the same with creatures, geological formations, and plants and everything else. Okay, it they're not a hundred percent unique. Um, so I would say pretty much there's there's a, a lot of there's infinite variety there to us to a degree it's, no it's not even infinite variety is it it's like having a massive great big box of lego and trying to build a house from it you, you're going to build something unique each time but eventually you're going to see patterns in what you build and in the end you're going to make the same house like once or twice over if you're making freaking loads of them you know what i'm saying anyway Survive on a dangerous frontier. You're alone and vulnerable. You face threats everywhere, from deep space to thick forests. Okay, thick forests. I have seen pretty thick foliage on planets, but not as thick as what I see, or as dense as what I saw in, say, GDC 2015 or whatever it was back in the day, where they were showcasing No Man's Sky and showing swamp biomes and showing big forest planets. We've got nothing as dense as what you saw then, and now we're on next-gen consoles that could literally do that. We're still not seeing that density or thickness of forest. Barren deserts to dark oceans, well, we still don't really have desert planets. We have the cactus flesh planets, but the actual sandy dune-type looking planets from all the trailers that we saw still don't exist to date. We still don't have barren desert planets. So it's a little bit weird that that's even there, and dark oceans is very rare that I find a super deep ocean but they are out there I give them that I suppose but anyway you can pick apart each of these and say oh really really you know that's what I'm getting at anyway scrolling down because we've then got all the videos lovely jobs heck yours and we've still got some of the interviews I mean in this one Sean of the Murrays actually talks about you know planetary rotation and all that sort of stuff and says yes we've got our own unique sort of periodic table in here we've made up our own elements he gets likened to God in that video it was that crazy when it first came out we had all this sort of lovely stuff that they made up and put into game inside of universe but then that's been backpedaled massively and now we've got a periodic table that almost resembles very earth-like periodic table unsure why they did that and they must have their reasons but we don't know them because communication hasn't been out there and you know as they haven't adjusted these they haven't removed any of these videos that are no longer true and and these were you know were supposedly early early gameplay galaxy gameplay trailer you know keynotes presentation this is gameplay 2014 gameplay and it's advertised as gameplay now these giant majestic diplos just don't appear inside of game and they get the diplos that we have right now they don't turn their heads on on a pivot like this one's doing right there their tails don't do all wavy davy stuff they don't they don't even wade out into the freaking water they disappear if they do so yeah this is this is very unrealistic and it has turned out that this was scripted it was found inside of a folder and everything was scripted but sean of the murray said no i just like visiting this world but there's countless worlds like this and variants of you know and there's a rhino that smashes down trees and interacts with the environment gameplay I'm just going to point it out gameplay okay so this is the sort of thing every time i say every time there's a major update we're like have they finally delivered on their promise this is the promise this is the promise this is this is what we hope to see and you can see how dense this forest is inside of this trailer as well i mean we have something similar but i don't think we have the density or variety in trees either it's like every tree in this looks different some have got leaves growing up them or moss we've got vines hanging from them some are bendy and wavy davy but what we have inside of game is fixed assets that are being procedurally placed or not even procedurally placed it's been placed by uber noise which is a technique that sean has actually described after the game released so I don't know what happened to the Super Formula. I don't know what happened to this infinite variety that was promised back in this gameplay trailer. Okay. 
So anyways, I know I keep revisiting this, but there's a lot of things in here, like these mega structures on planets that just looked uber interesting. Yes, we've got colossal archives now. Yes, we have some larger scale sort of buildings, but it was almost suggested that around every corner there would be something of interest to draw the player to. And that hasn't actually really happened. Now we get to the actual screenshots, which are super easy, super easy to replace out. Hello Games could replace these on a freaking turn of a dime, but they haven't. Now some of these, yes, exist. That, that almost looks like current game. That's fine. This one almost looks like current game. And that one, fine. I'm not too sure about all these voxel cubes. I don't think I've ever seen it lit, lit up like that before, but it would be really cool if we could see something like that in game. That's not canon. I mean, look at all these like little mini monoliths around this giant portal here. And these, these sort of airborne fauna here, they're freaking weird. We haven't got those sort of exact sort of airborne faunas. And these, even these lipstick crystals, they don't appear in game anymore. So that screenshot, I would say they should do away with. I mean, they've already got a modern looking portal. Get rid of this one, you know, because that's just not in game. That's not a selling point. If, if that goes out in a press pack right now, this is what you're expecting to see in 2024. Bollocks. It, it, it is BS, pretty much. And again, some of these are really old. I mean, that's pretty old. But at the same time, it, it's still kind of linked to current game. I mean, you could say that's current. I mean, you could probably come across that image. I mean, every tree looks identical. Uh, yeah, uh, these are okay. These are fine. Yeah, they're all good. And those are good. This one isn't. You see this herd of freaking stegosaur? I have never seen creatures herding like that, all sort of in tandem, bringing up dust clouds as they go. When you see that animated, it's freaking awesome. These giant spiky type bits of formation on the terrain as well. I haven't seen that inside a game. And I haven't seen stegosaurs that look that majestically awesome either. That looks freaking amazing. That shouldn't be on here. This screenshot, I think they should do away with, in my opinion. And the same with this one. I mean, that's, that's, um, that actual ship there has got a glass window screen that you can see through. And you've got sentinel ships just flying over, just willy-nilly. No, that's, that's, that doesn't happen. And every single one of these trees is different. Again, they look like they are all procedurally generated and morphed with some kind of weird super formula, dare I say. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, I wouldn't say, is canon. That needs to go. And I, I, although I have seen sentinels now swarming out in the wild, this image is questionable. And also this one definitely questionable because I've never seen walkers walking about in the wild. I've never seen terrain that looks as awesome as this, apart from when it was back in the old vanilla days, very much at launch. But then it was heridium lumps that you would see everywhere. But not like that. There would be like one or two within like a swathe of like 100,000 years or something, you know. Well, not 100,000, but you know, 4,000 years or something. But yeah, that, that just doesn't happen in game. I love all this fogging effect that's there as well. I mean, that looks freaking great, doesn't it? But no, that that should probably go because I, I don't think that's in game. I don't think that's canon to game currently, you know? So all I'm saying is if they want to put out a press pack that's more truthful, this needs a serious rework. They need to have, need to have a serious word with themselves at sort of Hello Game Studio and say, is this actually a fact sheet or is this a sheet that could mislead people into what their expectations are? I mean, look at that. There's another giant mega structure right there. And look at this planet. Look at the waves on the ocean as well. We don't get water physics with waves like that. You're having a laugh, mate. That's not the game we've got. That's not the game we're playing. I mean, look at the forest on this as well. No, we, we don't see that level of... No, we just don't. And it's again like this one. Look, you can see the tree with a the bend there. You can see all the vines hanging down. You see this majestic diplo. And this is just one planet in quintillion planets that you might land on. You know, you're not going to see... We just don't get this level of variety. And every update, it's like, is this the update that's going to deliver on that E3 gameplay trailer? Or at least it is for me. Yeah, that's what I watched. That's when I hit pre-order. That's what sold me the game. Okay? All this new stuff with autophages and um, everything else that we're getting. As much as I love it, I would equally love to see the promise get delivered into game. So anyways, that brings me to the end of all of this sort of stuff. I mean, what the fudge is that? Anyway, going back to what I actually put as a reply to Sean Murray's tweet, I actually put here, 
started off as a journey to the moon. Why at Hello Games was still building the rocket. Honestly think the rocket has landed successfully. Very positive statement. And I think Sean Murray has actually coined that term himself. It was like building a rocket as we was on our journey to the moon. And I love that. It's something that stuck with me that Sean said. And I honestly think that it is a labour of love. But at the same time, that rocket, if they don't build it, they're not going to make it to the moon. So it's in their best interest to keep building that rocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it has worked out for them. Their studio has gone from strength to strength to strength. If you jump over to Company House, it's not like they're doing themselves out of pocket with all of these updates that they're doing. So when people say, well, each update is free, Captain Steve, it is. But at the same time, they've now got quite a big purse load of cashola to say, right, OK, let's start delivering in a few of these promises. With every update, we're going to give them something that we want to put into the game, like the auto photo like sentinel ships all this stuff that they're not asking for but we feel they're gonna love but then the stuff that they are asking for maybe we should put a little bit of that in as well at the same time and some of that I honestly feel for legacy players like myself I don't want to talk for everyone it's so difficult this is my own opinion I want to see some of this come into the game okay that's what I want to see so then I put in a little joke Apart from the Diplo, still don't look as majestic. Laughing my ass off, which it is kind of funny. I mean, at the moment, the Diplos that we've got are like little cranes. They're, the only animation they've got, goes, <laughs> with their head. That's it. They don't do none of this. They don't do none of that. They don't do any looking around. There's no living or breathing in our Diplos. It's <laughs> they're like freaking cranes. Okay. One day there'll be a Diplo overhaul. One day, I mean. They added in those real nice majestic butterfly things that go around. Oh, they look great. The beetles as well. <laughs> They're awesome. Heck yes, they look like living, breathing, organic, majestic creatures. Whoever done the beetles and the dragonflies, okay, as a project, please, Hello Games, give them the diplos. Or any, uh, and, and other dinosaur type looking freaking gits. Heck yes, even the rhinos or something. Even if you have to add in some scripted freaking planets from time to time, Hello Games, that actually put a Raya V in the game somewhere. That'd be freaking lovely. There's the test script freaking folder that you've got sitting somewhere in a closet with dust all over it because it's been stripped out of the game files now. Deliver it in. Make it so if you put in a certain portal code, you can go and visit that scripted area of space. That'd be freaking lovely. Maybe you restrict base building there. Don't have any base building. Have it as a secret Easter egg. I don't know. Put it out at Easter. Heck, you could even get your little uh, them, them last campfire chappies. Those little sacky dudes. Put them on the planet. Little rundering around. Oh, it'd be cool to have one of them as a pet. You know, you'd go to town on it. Have a scripted system of your own that you can only get to with a certain portal code in a certain galaxy and make it an Easter egg and maybe hint or allude to it around Easter time. That'd be freaking great. Anyway, that's an idea anyhow. I don't know. But at the same time, I just feel that your press pack needs to reflect reality. And right now, and for a long time, it hasn't. So, you know, and, and this is where things fall down because a lot of these screenshots are still used in press packs and you look at them and you think oh, i wish that was still in game i mean it's a constant reminder it's a constant kick in the teeth that although no man's sky is great and no man's sky is slowly getting to be a game that you can call a game rather than a sandbox there's still things that are, are hinted to and alluded to in some of these trailers and inside of some of these screenshots that we're like oh god please I hope this comes in the next update. The next update, please have some of this in it. And although we get stuff and we're like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is freaking awesome. It keeps us interested for a while, but then it's the variety. We still need variety. In a game where exploration is core and key, the variety needs to be there. That sort of sense that the worlds are organic and living and breathing that we got in that E3 game trailer just feels a little bit shy of that right now you know this this is just beyond amazing this i still feel that this should be what we're actually playing right now people anyway i put that in the background while i'm drinking some of my tea but as you can see i mean the variety of this looks freaking great doesn't it i mean look at the trees look at the depth of the trees as well and the foliage dent and and just how different each and every tree is there's 
Oh, those butterflies weren't in game originally, people. And apparently, Hello Games received death threats just because the butterflies weren't in there. I love it with the little label that comes up above the creature's heads and it's sort of see-through, but it's 3D in-game as well. Even that I really liked. I kind of even like some of this old HUD, you know, some of these UIs that are in the, in the, in the corners there. I quite like them as well. It would be awesome if there was a setting that you could toggle to activate these. Or even if Hello Games implemented a whole new game mode and just called it the Explorer, made it solo and made it so there was no base building. I'm, I, I don't know whether base building is making it too complex to deliver all this stuff in. Maybe we've got base building instead of infinite variety. But if that's the case, maybe put in a game mode where it negates all the base building. There isn't anything overly complex. Make it a solo experience and deliver this game. I mean, the way that all those creatures dart through the undergrowth as that rhino smashes the tree. And you've got Sean Murray saying, yeah, this is just one planet. This is just one planet of Quintillion. I mean, you could go to another planet. I don't know what you're going to see on that planet. You could see mega worms. You could see anything. You could see craziness. You know, this is just one planet where, you know, we thought we'd share it because everybody knows what a dinosaur is. There's stuff out there so alien that you wouldn't even know if you was on land or in sea, is what he actually said. And... That's the game that I signed up for. That's the game that I wanted to get jump into. Now these giant freighter ba battles, this sort of stuff wasn't even in game to start off with. It is now. It is now. This has been delivered in. I mean, but the freighters don't move like they are in this one. They're actually moving still. I mean, they don't do that at the moment. They're rather stationary. They warp in and they stay in place. But those ones are actually you know, moving along. Anyway, I'm going to drink some of this. Now this planet's quite interest, interesting, so left prime. So instead of having flora on the planet, you know, like trees and bushes and all that sort of stuff, instead it's, you've got all these little industrial sort of outposts, like mining outcrops, which I think is quite a nice idea. It'd be nice to see planets that are like this, more industrialised, or maybe it could just have buildings everywhere, a little bit like what we've got with settlements, but have like little mini settlements everywhere instead of loads of trees and stuff. You know, I mean, there was a tree or two down there and there's a cactus or two on this planet too. The planets just feel a little bit more varied, even though they're not as in-depth as what we see now. Most planets that we have now, yeah, are covered in life. But before, when we first got into this, you had come across barren sort of marbles like that. Oh, before I go, actually, I, I do need to point out that Hello Games has done a swathe of freaking updates. I mean, look at them all. There's loads of updates. I mean, this is the 7th anniversary video. And you know what? I'm very much looking forward to the 8th anniversary, the 9th anniversary, the 10th anniversary of No Man's Sky. I do hope that they continue to support No Man's Sky. And I do hope that some of that infinite variety makes it in from update to update. We saw a lot of that happen in the Origins update. I have to give them the credit where credit's due. And Origins was a fantastic update. And when they put out Origins, they actually said, this is, this is a new foundation. This is a stepping stone for us. We're taking it back to its Origins and we're looking at how we can improve its Origins. And it almost felt like when they were talking about the Origins update, the Sean Murray interview that he did with IGN, it sounded like every update from here on in was going to have a little bit more variety injected in. Sadly, that wasn't the case. We didn't see that happen. And that would have been very welcomed. If every update had a little bit more, let's just tweak exploration. Let's put in a little bit more variety. Maybe we might be more towards this sort of level of variety now when i say level of variety now i'm on about the diplo sort of trailer you can't see it because it's behind me at the moment but anyway that i think that's everything now i just wanted to end on a positive rather than a negative um because hello games has done a great deal okay and it is a labor of love and i'm sure that they're putting in something that they feel that the community wants or needs perhaps they're seeing things on reddit that people are asking for that i'm just not seeing inside of my own community perhaps a lot of people have been sounding off and asking for things but then even like these echoes okay now the echoes just appear majestically out of nowhere i actually did a video on what happens if you put in a station override maybe it brings in this race of beings and i actually put up a mock-up of them if I can find it I'll put it just there uh, so you can see what I mean but my idea of putting in the station override and this whole new race appears it's kind of happened but it's happened on the planet's surfaces was I responsible for the autophages 
I don't know. It was probably on the cards, to be fair, people, wasn't it? But it kind of feels that echoes or sentiments of what the community want. Hello Games are picking up on and going, oh, they want some of this, do they? They want some weirdness. We give them some living ships. Oh, they want a new race. There you are. You've now got autophages. Oh, you want cities? Well, we can't deliver cities, but we can give you settlements. You know, honestly, do think they are listening. I do feel that what we're after is slowly coming into game. And even the variety, they, inner side of Origins, they gave us two new biomes. They gave us swamp biomes eventually. And they also gave us lava worlds. Um, but both of those feel like they need a, a, a lot more depth, a lot more love to them. Out of all the biomes, they're not the better biomes, let's face it. I mean, you've probably visited, what, about four lava worlds and four swamp worlds and then probably never again. You know what I mean? They all feel very samey. Anyway, people, I'm going to end off now. That's, that's pretty much... Only, oh, shite. That'd be ending on a negative, wouldn't it? Love you, Hello Games! <laughs> Keep up the good work. Can't wait to see what you do in 2024. I'm going to do a wish list video, people, in the viewer for 2024. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that... That shows exactly what I would like to hope to see inside of 2024. I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I keep holding out to see whether Hello Games is going to deliver Reduxes or Expedition 12 or something a little bit special as a surprise. But we are running out of year now. I think I'll make my wish list when we hit the, the first week of December, people inside the viewerverse. Anyway, um, when it comes to Professor Cynical, I think it's good that he's keeping debate going, okay? So that's a positive from his video. I think um, that he, he's keeping Discord open. He's keeping debate happening. He's keeping people talking about Hello Games. And for that reason, you know, fine. Uh, that's great, you know? And at the same time, I kind of... I have my own gripes with that comment. I think that comment that was made has a very double edge to it. It depends where you are in the community. If you're new to the community... I think you're going to agree with every word because it's an unbelievably a ma massive, immersive adventure, especially for first start game, middle game. End game though, end game loop, end game content, that needs to bring up to par to middle and start. Once I've done that, I think it's fair to say that Hello Games can then call No Man's Sky a completed game. Right now, I still think they're building that rocket ship. Yes, it's landed on the moon, but can it get back from the moon? Yeah, that's where they are now. Okay, <laughs> End game. End game is getting home. They've got there. They've got to the moon. They've landed. It's a great game. Middle and start. The end game, though, getting back home, landing back safely on Earth. That bit they haven't quite done yet. There you go, analogy wise. So that's how I feel about that comment. And I kind of feel that perhaps Professor Cynical has picked up on the same sort of vein. How we put it out there may have rubbed people up the wrong way. But at the same time, it got them talking. So, yeah, I would say hit up Professor Cynical because he's, he always brings something interesting to the table and he's, he's never rude about it inside of his comments. There's room for Discord there. He's actually a nice guy. How he puts things over, his name is Professor Cynical. He's not called Professor Frickin' Nice, is he? He's Professor Cynical because he's cynical about stuff, OK? Um, so there we are. That That's what all I want to say on that. I would just say... If you go over to him and you're subscribed, you're subscribed because perhaps you've got the same sort of wavelength as him. You agree with some of the stuff that he comes out with. So there we are, people. Anyway, now I really do need to go. <laughs> Hopefully I've ended on a positive. And I hope this hasn't come across as negative at all in any way, shape or form. I kind of feel that Hello Games could do themselves a favour by, by updating their freaking website and by just acknowledging when things are going wrong and putting out a statement. Even if it is just something on Twitter, we're aware that there's been a delay with this release and we're aware that PC and PlayStation are enjoying this update. However, Xbox and Switch still don't have it. Something along those lines, we're working on it. It's outside of our control. It's to do with certification. Something like that would go a long way inside of the community. There's times for radio silence because you can show what you're working on by putting it out there. But then when things go wrong for a massive chunk of your community, that's the time to talk, in my opinion, people. That's the time to talk. Uh, sound up in the comments. Let us know how you feel about this. Are you in agreement with me? I know that there's going to be people that are and aren't. And I know this is quite a diversive sort of video to put out there. But at the same time, it keeps debate happening, which I think is much needed in times of silence. There's silence right now. Until next time. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.